What's going on guys, it's your boy Az, we are back, uh, this is a little bit of a later video because uh, we've been on the road and haven't had a time to get these uploaded, but we're going to bring up the next batch of the uh, characters we've got for the Cosmic Nodes, and uh, starting off here we've got uh, Castro uh, front and center, I actually just, uh, we uh, just finished getting the last piece we needed on her, I think it was the, um, the shield tech material and uh, that was the last one I really needed to push the next five so that was really great uh, we finally finally got it from a, a raid orb drop which is really nice for us and uh, yeah hopefully we can uh, make use of that so we're gonna bring up the next five characters up for cosmic and I think a lot of people already kind of have uh, Castro and uh, and uh, the Eternals pegged in so I think that makes the most sense uh, definitely for sure uh, that's the game plan here. Uh, she is, in my book, still a very, very, uh, a very, very, very top, probably top five uh, standalone character in the game. And of course, uh, we rely on her as well in a lot of different game modes. Uh, I think she's she's quite good in the tech nodes uh, for Doom raids, and uh, I don't really use her on the nodes two and the boss node, but I use her in the first node with Santa Supreme, and she does so much damage. Um, yeah, we'll see how the tier 16 goes. Tier 16 is probably going to make her punch a little more damage into those nodes. And it's going to, yeah, give us a definite edge for sure. Uh, other cosmic characters, as you can see here, we got Infinity Watch and uh, lots of different choices we can use. And uh, I think a lot of people are going with uh, Ravagers, the Stitcher, Stitcher, uh, T'Challa combo because they're cheap. But we're going to switch it up here. We're going to bring up, uh, we're going to bring up Phylavel because my Stitcher is only like level 20. Um, or maybe 30, I don't remember. But uh, she's good because she's already level 85. Uh, we use her extensively for Crucible, for War. Uh, she still has a lot of purposes. Uh, she's quite good in the Avengers Tower as well. So it makes sense to bring up a character you've already brought up to level 85. And uh, we've already pumped in so many resources on her ISO 8s. And as well as her levels and gears and everything else. Uh, so it makes sense to me. And I might even push her past 85 uh, when I when I get when I level up and all that jazz. But right now, uh, tier 16, uh, yeah, let's get her done. And I think uh, I think a lot of people are also picking uh, Moon Dragon as well. So it depends on what your resources are. But I had a lot of bio materials. Uh, I did not really use too many bow characters for those first uh those city nodes i think a lot of people went squirrel girl and um maybe spider-man og or uh, uh some people went uh spider punk as well but i had a lot of bow materials saved up uh we've got xerxy here i think that makes the most sense we use her in the arena still uh she is a top crucible team she is very good on war uh and uh and even though they haven't really uh, kept up with the arena meta I still use her extensively to counter uh, depending on my teams it, it depends on the team up in the lineups but she's quite good still and uh, yeah tier 16 is going to bump up looks, uh, looks like a good chunk of health uh, uh, and some decent stats as well and the other stuff uh, damage actually uh, and armor uh, just a little nudge there but uh, yeah it is what it is uh, we don't really have that many yellows on her because uh, you know, she was, uh, she hasn't really been farmable at this point, but, uh, yeah, who cares? Uh, we, uh, we'll get her to tier 16. Same with our, our boy, uh, Icarus as well. Uh, I think those two go hand in hand together. And a lot of people are deciding if they want to bring them up and save the materials for like, uh, you know, for Morgan Le Fay or, uh, you know, Adam Warlock for the legendary nodes. But I, I definitely just, you know what, these guys, even as a standalone character, they're so good in so many modes. Um, uh, they're they're going to be good for uh, you know they're going to be good for the scourges they're going to be good for uh, uh, future scourges probably most likely uh, depending on if they have like hero hero traits or whatever uh, cosmic traits etc etc and yeah they're just they're just such good characters uh, of course they form that synergy as well with each other and the stun and the uh, the speed reduction is just crazy so that's the four there and then last but not least we have uh, we have we do have a, a ravager uh, we we've got our boy. Uh, Star Lord uh, that we're gonna bring up here uh, again. I think lots of people are deciding if they want to bring Stitcher or him, and I use him quite often and quite frequently in the uh, Doom raids, so it makes sense to me. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's quite good in the Gambit raids as well, so I think it makes even more sense now that we have him leveled up and tiered up. 
So I think that makes the most sense. Uh, uh, and of course, if you do have Stitcher, you're going to form some really nice synergy with him, get some death. I think I think he gets a bit of immunity from from Stitcher. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think, well, yeah, I think they, they form a bit of synergy. But I mean, lots of people have these Ravager teams leveled up as well. So if, if you're better than me, then of course, do it up. Do it up if you can. All right, guys. So that's the five that we're bringing up for Cosmic. So let's uh, let's jump into some gameplay. And uh, do keep in mind here that uh, uh, yeah, like I said already, that uh, we finished up the last uh, the global note. But uh, the five that I picked uh, aren't. I don't think. Well, we shouldn't have too many issues. I think uh, based on what I've already seen from other people, uh, the, this team is quite good. Uh, we might not necessarily get the one shots, but definitely won't take us too long. I think probably get a couple, of, you know, two or three shotters in there if we have to. But the team itself is carried on. By the Eternals. I don't think the other three really matter. I think if you have Castro in there, it's a very nice addition as well. But if you have the three quarterbacks, uh, really the other two characters could pretty much be any character. That's why I think the Ravagers can get away with it being on this team. Uh, same with uh, same with if you bring up Philavel or Moon Dragon, that they technically don't really have much synergy uh, when they're by themselves. But uh, overall, uh, they are carried by the Eternals, and they kind of form that massive synergy. Keep in mind as well, I don't want to eat up too much of your guys' time, so I did speed up some of the footage on certain parts uh, when we're down to the last five or six guys, so that way you guys don't have to watch the whole thing out. But uh, initially, as you guys can see here, we're taking out uh, we're taking out uh, Phoenix, and luckily for us as well, we have Kestrel on the board, which cancels out her summon. And then the next biggest threat is uh, is um, Falcon. So take him out so that way he doesn't give any speed bonuses, etc., etc., etc. Again, we got Kestrel's charge there blocking out that summon from Doc Ock. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can kind of take your pick here. But with these three characters left over, uh, they're pretty good because what ends up happening is you can use these characters, kind of build up your charges for the your abilities for the next blast, uh, for the next uh, Icarus. Xerxes Blast for the next wave, and uh, yeah, it just helps prep you up. Uh, nice Loki has the summons as well here because uh, it just, like I said, it eats up turns and it helps uh, rebuild our uh, our cooldowns for the next wave. Uh, and it's a good way. It's a good way. It's a good entry level node to get us into the cosmic, and uh, helps us out as well because uh, you know, it, in the off chance that the next wave does drop. Uh, we, we, you know, we're, we're not ready and we don't have the cooldowns because, yeah, we do need those cooldowns. They do help out quite a bit. And not only the damage part, but the speed reduction gives our team a little bit of an edge there. And uh, and actually what I noticed was um, despite, uh, you know, despite even off the cooldowns, Icarus and Xerxes still perform quite well because they have these crazy amount of buffs on themselves. But the, uh, the speed actually really helps keep the team together because we don't really have much heals going on. That's why Stitcher really shines, I think, on this node. Um, because he heals and he provides some, some sort of heals, uh, what I recommend doing here is uh, turning Phylavel or Moon Dragon or whoever you're using, uh, have that healer isolate. Uh, that way you can get a little bit of heals in the process. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, like her barrier that she brings on the board. Uh, that helps us out a little bit, but it's not really heals. And uh, Icarus and Xerxes can kind of carry themselves. Uh, T'Challa can kind of give himself evasion and extend it. So that's kind of nice as well. But, uh, you know, uh, if they truly, truly single out one character and target them, uh, we're kind of hooped in that sense. So, yeah, without the lack of heals there... Uh, we do kind of put ourselves in a little bit of situation. And I, I knew that as well going into this. Uh, so we smashed that special down the middle, hitting the Carnages. I think it's important to hit them because uh, uh, they once they get going with momentum, it might be an issue moving on. So you want to just make sure. Uh, yeah, and keep in mind as well, if you take care of the Carnages and you leave uh, Anti-Venom alone, he does... Uh, he does revive, so just make sure you guys are aware of that, and that's kind of why we're focusing our attacks kind of centering in the middle here. Um, yeah, and I also like focusing, uh, I like focusing on, uh, on, uh, on the dad bros as well, just to make sure, uh, they're not getting those barriers up, because that's gonna, yeah, it does, it, it helps us out a little bit for building turn meters, but, uh, the barrier does get annoying, so take out the carnages first, and then you can go for, um, you know, you can go for the squishies like Polaris or or the other dad bros. Um, taking them both out and just kind of making sure one's blinded that they don't get any hits in will help kind of counteract their, 
their ability to kind of get some momentum going with the barriers. Um, anyways, that's kind of my approach. I'm not sure if that's the right format, but uh, it seemed like I, I feel like it, that's what worked for me. Um, yeah, and I mean, they're not going to do too much damage because we do have lots of defense up and barriers going on as well from our side. But yeah, we'll speed this up so you guys can see. Uh, we go for uh, uh, we go for shatter first. And, uh, and again, you feel free to leave Anti-Venom alone if you want because he does revive and it helps kind of bring, uh, you know, it does extend some turn meter if you need to stick around a little longer. So he, oh, so uh, I did uh, forget who he brought back. But yeah, he, I think, I think because Anti-Venom went down before the Carnage did. So that's kind of why, but it helps extend the turn uh, meter, which, uh, or not the turn meter, but it helps extend our abilities so that way we can get some abilities built up for the next wave and uh to me i think that's beneficial because you want to make sure your cooldowns are all ready to go and uh, for the most part uh most of these characters aren't too much of a threat although i like i said already with no heals on the board it does make it a little harder to uh it does make it a little harder to uh sustain yourself uh especially without a healer so change the iso to a healer and it might help a little bit or even having a couple healer iso -8s. Um, I don't think the damage is going to take too much of a hit for that. Just because uh, we need sustain as well on these nodes. Um, and we'll leave we'll leave Anti-Venom last. Because that way if he's last, uh, you can sort of kind of heal up some characters with the regen. And if he decides to revive somebody again, uh, it helps extend our turn meter and gives us a little more cushion uh, to get the cooldowns up. Uh, most of our cooldowns are already up, but it's just, it's just you know, the process itself and making sure you guys uh, have everything ready to go and everything is at full power. Uh, and then the last wave is kind of, or the second last wave, I guess, uh, is uh, is a little bit of a, it's, um, it's a little bit of a mixed, uh, it's a mixed team. And uh, again, going for, uh, going for Polaris. Uh, we'll land the, we'll land the ultimates, get some turn meter in. Uh, yeah, it's more of like a Sinister Six team, I guess. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because uh, as long as you take out the key characters, I, I like going straight down the middle again here with the special. Um, take care of Vulture because if somebody dies, he gets that turn meter. It's kind of annoying. Uh, we'll use the barrier there to give us some cushion. Um, uh, feel free to stun, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Octopus uh, because uh, he can flip our negatives. He can bring the heals. Uh, yeah, or negatives. He flips a positive, sorry. Uh, but yeah, take care of Vulture. Um, and then I find that uh, going down the middle right here uh, is beneficial because if you get if you leave um, if you leave uh, uh, Shocker, he can get some nice offense up for his team, and it actually stings quite a bit. So I did I did kind of experiment and see that uh, uh, that uh, if uh, you know he does get the defense up, he just kind of gives it people. A nice little boost of damage so uh you know maybe maybe going for him first before vulture is a good idea as well uh so you see here he does a couple hits there on the crits and i mean for the most part it's not a bad team um it's just taking care of that nasty dr octopus and then all these standalone guys are pretty pretty bad like they're pretty basic and uh especially with our team that we have uh we will make sure short work of these guys pretty quick uh, we'll speed this up now so you guys don't have to watch the full speed of it uh, at regular speed. But yeah, taking care of Carnage again. Uh, I think he's probably got the best stats out of these characters. And then yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you can leave you can leave Rhino last because he's kind of like a tanky, slow. Uh, he'll help, he can help build your cooldowns back. So he, you know, you can kind of leave him alone. Uh, keep in mind this one uh, when you bring. Uh, I think was it you drop one more character then the next wave drops so keep that in mind as well So you can bring these guys as health as low as you can possibly before the next wave hits so that way you just have to give them a tickle and They'll just basically get you know struck down with ease. So that's what I did there um, Yeah, next, last and final wave again anti venom can bring back a previous fallen character keep that in mind as well so uh, we have Scream as well on the board here. So Scream's annoying because when someone goes down, uh, she also gets turn meter. So keep that in mind as well. We'll probably focus on her. But again, we got the dab rolls. Uh, we're gonna stun one of. Uh, we're gonna stun long, uh, long shot here. Um, and then uh, what you can do is slash that middle down there. Um, it's gonna do some nice amount of damage in that 
cluster that I, I, uh, I you know you want to get the most value out of those specials from Kestro and, uh, and get that defense down as well so that's always nice to have uh, we'll uh, hit the special or the ultimate and get the, uh, the buffs lengthen pow we'll smash the special there as well hitting those targets all in the cluster there um, Falcon's quite low as well now just from splash damage so that's quite nice for us because you don't want to leave him alone uh, he, he can uh, do a pretty nice little speed buff for his team so you want to make sure you can get rid of him uh, and then again as just making sure again I think I should have mentioned this earlier but making sure every one of your hits is always landing on that defense down to get that extra proc from Castro we're gonna speed it up again because I think you guys get the gist of it um, I didn't really focus on scream I realized that so uh, but it probably would have been a smart thing to do because she gets that term when someone dies but yeah just, you know leave venom last he's chunky slow uh, you know, and then of course uh, we can take care of long shot as well. He's pretty useless without shatter and then yeah And then you can kind of just auto the rest of the way and uh, I think you guys get the gist of it here But yeah, it was very a very straightforward I thought it was a great way to get into the cosmic nodes, especially since uh, we don't have the ideal team uh, I think I think a lot of people went to chalice stitcher combo because it's lots of heals and sustain uh, We have to get a little more crafty, but I feel like instead of trying to bring up uh, instead of trying to bring up, uh, you know, uh, a character like a minion from level 30 to 85 or whatever, uh, if you have a pre-existing one already like Moon Dragon or Phylovel, I think that's a good strategy as well, guys. So, anyways, that's it. Uh, we should be able to pump out the other two nodes as well here quickly since uh, I don't feel like these cosmic nodes are going to be too tough on us. But, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, found this resourceful. And, uh, yeah, good luck with your Dark Dimension 5, and uh, we'll catch you guys next.